Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another exciting episode on the Planeswalker Guardian channel. And I have a lot of really cool stuff to talk to you about. Of course, it is Zendikar spoiler season, so I just want to really talk about stuff. Um, obviously, I'm not going to really go into... I don't really want to be the spoiler guy, but I want to talk about certain spoilers when they come out. And, man, there's some cool stuff that come out. Um, so, obviously, I'm not going to go into detail with everything, but I want to go into detail with some stuff I'm really excited about or really want to talk about. So, first of all, we got Gideon, the ally of Zendikar, which we're going to flip over to right now. And he has the four drop, uh, Planeswalker Gideon, and he, um, his plus, he comes in with four Planeswalker counters. Perfect. All right. Um, this just works so well. Um, you can see, you know, Gideon Champion Justice worked out not as well, uh, because he had the four counters, but, um, because kind of... Um, he becomes a 4-4 human soldier, which isn't, uh, the best. His ultimate is pretty good, but, um, his, uh, plus one ability wasn't amazing. Gideon Jura, you know, the probably most played, most used, most liked Gideon, uh, came in just like a boss with six at five mana. Um, you know, you can destroy a tap creature and that's your plus, um... Or, or, no, he doesn't destroy for his plus. He minus two is for a destroy, but that's still really good. Um, uh, and he, he just, he's, he's a pretty insane guy. Uh, you know, champion of justice, he becomes, uh, he becomes it for whatever loyalties he's at, which is pretty decent, but, um, you know, he he just isn't, he wasn't able to protect himself enough. Whereas Gideon Ally of Zendikar, this is the guy we want to talk about. He's a 4-4, four four, but uh, his plus one is where he becomes the human soldier. And being a 5-5 five five soldier ally, which is very important to note, because the fact he's an ally makes it insane in the set. Because obviously there's a lot of allies going around, and there's going to be a lot of ally support. Um, I mean, veteran war leader, for an example, I mean, Gideon on his own puts down a white knight ally. It's pretty sweet for his zero drop. And then as a minus four, which you can use right away, basically, if you just bring him out and you go with like, boom, spit out his emblem, minus four emblem creatures you control get plus one, plus one. So it's, you know, uh, automatic, um, honor, no, not honor of the period, be honor, it'd be glorious anthem. Glorious Anthem, which is a three drop, but it can be removed. Emblems cannot be touched in any form, which is really important to remember because it just can't be touched, which is great. So um, you know your 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 opponent just can't deal with that emblem coming out. But um, you know his plus one becoming a five five human soldier ally is pretty incredible. Um, I mean you can just smash your opponent right away there. Um, his zero drop putting out a 2-2 two, two white knight ally is pretty awesome. Uh, it's going to boost your knight or your ally stuff, which is really cool. Um, so, you know, he can just pe keep popping out uh, allies every turn without risking himself. Or, you know, he can just become one himself, and you can just build a good board presence either way with him. And then we're moving on to the big bad of Zendikar, Ulamog, uh, the Ceaseless Hunger. Um, so we can, you can see uh, Ulamog, the Infinite Gyre down there. Um, so obviously we got a little bit of, not necessarily a change in his art or in his character, um, but definitely you can see the big differences in the art now, um, but he's still got the tentacle thing going on, which is kind of creepy, kind of funny, um, but he's now 10 mana, 10-10, ten, ten. uh, obviously legendary little drowsy, uh, and when you cast him, you can exile two target permanents. He, of course, has Indestructible, as he did before. Uh, this time, when he attacks, defending player exiles the top 20 cards of his or her library. You mill for 20 when he attacks. It's insane. Uh, you know, your opponent has to exile him right away, because otherwise, it's really hard to um, deal with this mother, <laughs> this mother trucker. Um, dude's a baller. All right, can we just say that? Three turn clock, no matter what. Two turn clock, if you know he doesn't get a or he doesn't get blocked. Two turn clock, if he can't be blocked. Three turn clock, despite you know, despite that, 
Because no matter what, you've only got about 60 cards in your library. Three. Pretty crazy. Um, so then we're moving on to Titan's Presence, which is another insane card. Absolutely crazy. It's an instant colorless card, which is crazy, or as it is. Um, and as an additional cast uh, to it, you can reveal a colorless creature card from your hand, and then you exile target creature if its power is less than or equal to the revealed card's power. So, you know, you have lots of really big Eldrazi, and even not, if not that, you know, you have... A um, just a guy with big power instead of toughness or stuff like that, or, you know, his power is 5 or 4 or 3, you can exile a lot of stuff. Um, you can exile a lot of stuff with that one. Uh, you know, Siege Rhino is 4, so what do, you, what do you need to get that? There's plenty of Eldrazi that are 4 power, or greater, obviously. And then we're going to move on to... Um, the new slow lands have they been dubbed by a lot of people? It is uh, with the subtype um, basic lands, so it's the dual lands, new dual lands, which is pretty cool. Um, I know a lot of people don't necessarily like the idea of these ones because they're so slow, uh, but I think they're really cool, and I think they're really going to work in a standard environment as well as a limited environment. Um, I think these are going to be pretty crazy and pretty cool. Uh, so this is a prairie stream, which I thought was just the best art. I don't want to go through every single one of them, obviously, even though there's only five. But um, I think there will be another five in the next set, just to finish the enemy version of the dual lands. Uh, but it enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or more basic lands. So basically, basics, pretty basic, that you just have to have uh, uh, two or more basic lands. But they're fetchable. That is the most important thing, is that they are fetchable. Unlike uh, a lot of the other dual color things that we've been having, they're not fetchable, but these ones are, and it's kind of crazy to have something like this in a standard environment uh, with each, with fetch lands. It's kind of crazy, and I think it's going to be very cool and very fun uh, to do. Um, then we're going to move on to the first ally that I really want to talk about. Uh, I think this is going to be an intro pack rare for white, or uh, you know maybe white red white green white i think white green probably be our intro um because i don't think veteran war leader i don't think they'll make her our intro pack rare um for allies but i think this would be a really good one for the white green or white deck for the intro deck um four and one white it's a creature human knight ally with the new um ability rally which basically just replaces the old ally um effect that they used to have uh just to give it a name and the fact it also doesn't just hit allies it hits all of your creatures but it is only affected when an ally comes into the play which this is a when it comes when this one comes into play it triggers it itself which is pretty which is always really cool um so whenever he enters the battlefield under your control creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn and he's a four three which is pretty decent um, not incredible, but, you know, the fact that you'll probably have Indestructible every turn on your turn is pretty cool. Then we got, uh, the Guardian of Tazim, and this one was the one I want to talk about because it was the first one that was spoiled that had, uh, the special condition landfall. There was another Hydra that had it, but I just want to talk about this one because I think this one's actually a little bit better than the Hydra, even though the Hydra is pretty cool. Uh, but either way, three, two, blue... Uh, Guardian of Tazim, he is a creature sphinx with flying, and he's a 4-5, which is pretty good for 5, so there's always that, but he has landfall whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, tap target creature and opponent controls, if that land is an island, that creature doesn't untap it during its controller's next untap step, which is pretty insane when you think about it, but it has to be an island, which is totally reasonable, but... Uh, the, this landfall that uh, the type matters is a really cool um, idea. I like the idea behind it that you know it it matters which one it is. It doesn't it doesn't necessarily matter because it'll still trigger the first ability, but it'll be better if it's this one, right? Like the Hydra is put a one one counter on it if it's a land, but if it's a forest, put two. It matters. It's pretty cool. I like the idea behind. Uh, making it a little bit better. 
I think this is definitely first pickable in draft for sure. This is definitely one of those that's like, oof, scary. Um, Omnath, Locus of Rage. So Big Daddy Omnath is back, and this time he's not bringing in the mana. He is just throwing it out. He's just throwing it out and ready to destroy stuff, which is super cool. Um, so three double red, double green legendary creature elemental landfall whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control put a five five red and green elemental creature token onto the battlefield and whenever he uh or another elemental you control dies he deals three damage to target creature or player which is pretty insane he's definitely a really cool um edh commander i think he he works really well with ominous focus of mana honestly uh, obviously which is kind of funny it's kind of cool he's big he's bad He's going to um, really wreck some stuff. And uh, actually, as you can see in the comments for this uh, particular card, I was going actually going to say this, but uh, Nantuko Husk combo, Jund, Jund Nantuko Husk with Omnith is pretty hilarious. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's pretty cool. He's going to hit hard, I can tell you that much. I don't know how well he's how well his particular deck is gonna play in standard at what decks could be built around him, but there's definitely some options out there. Um, then I want to talk about um, the cards that aren't necessarily in Zendikar, but th they'll be playable in Limited, but they won't be playable in Standard. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, you probably won't very see these very often. They are in the Mythic Rare Foil spot, which is technic. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. It's a it's the Premium Foil spot, which is basically you know anything. So they'll probably be more common than you know regular. Uh, mythic rare will be at least according to Morrow. That's what he said. That should be the case, but we'll see. Uh, but Arid Mesa. So basically, all of the Zendikar fetches are back in full art, foil only, which is a little, sh a little shitty in a couple of different ways. Um, obviously, it would have been uh, kind of su sucky to have, uh, at least for some people, uh, to have multiple or all 10 different fetches in the same standard environment because it just causes so much shuffling and Wizards doesn't really want that because it takes too much time and pe some people are just so slow about it. Especially with these new duels, it'd be kind of, it'd be a little annoying. It's probably already going to be a little annoying. <laughs> um, with the five, or the 10, or uh, the five that we have, it's probably still going to be a little annoying. But uh, it's really cool that they are being reprinted. Um, it's a little interesting how they're being done, I'm not quite sure about it. Um, the art looks incredible, though. I will say the art looks incredible on the fetches. Uh, no doubt about it. Um, uh, I doubt they'll be bringing down the price. I really doubt that. <laughs> I wouldn't expect that at all. Um, I definitely wouldn't buy them for $200, though, because that definitely that ain't worth it, brother. Um, and then we're going to move on to the other full arts that we're going to get. Obviously, we get the full art slow lands as well, but I don't think that's really as important as having the full art shock lands, which is super awesome. Once again, it's not legal in standard, but it is legal in a limited environment. So if you draft these babies, wow. Well, more power to you, brother, because that is, that's helpful. Um, and money. <laughs> and money. Uh, but, you know, you know shock lands as they enter, blah, blah, blah. So we'll have all ten... Um, theoretically, uh, so that'll be pretty cool, um, it'll be really cool, really awesome to have these in there, um, just absolutely incredible that these are going to be in a draft environment, uh, really incredible that, uh, the, sh the fetches are going to be in a draft environment, um, and with the new dual lands, it's it's going to cause some chaos, and I think that's going to be really fun. And I think that's the whole part of Zend point of Zendikar is that there's going to be lots of chaos. Um, I will say I'm not sure yet about the full art on the shock lands. I think that's pretty cool, but I really love my Ravnica land, so I guess I'm just biased. I think, but I think this one's really pretty beautiful. We all, we can also go over and see. Uh, uh, we also obviously get the full art lands, which all look gorgeous. Um, you see a little bit of the destruction in here, uh, but you also see just the vastness of Zendikar and how beautiful it is. And really, it doesn't look that destroyed um, so far. Uh, but we can see the hollowed fountain, which looks absolutely beautiful as well. And then obviously the five slow lands in full art form, which look incredible as well, but... 
I don't know. I just got to give it to that Arid Mesa. The Prairie stream, I'm honestly a little disappointed about because uh, if we go back to the other Prairie stream, I really love that land. That land is gorgeous. I don't know. Maybe I'm just crazy. And the Canopy Vista, what, what's? how can you beat that? How can you beat the other one? That one's just not as good. <laughs> Maybe that's just my opinion. But yeah, of course, it's just my opinion. So uh, just a re little recap about all the spoilers that I was really excited about. Um, obviously, there's a lot of other good stuff that you can check out on other people's channel. Because this is just what I'm excited about. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, have a hell of a week. And I hope you're all excited for Battle for Zendikar.